Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of Orange Grow 55. I brought my good friends with me today to talk about Lake Nona, Florida. A lot of stuff happening this week in regards to Imagineering and Disney Parks. We're going to talk about it. Um, but first, before we get started, I want to introduce my panel. Uh, there we go, right here. <laughs> um, the uh, first gentleman I want to start with is Mr. Vash Sky the host of Freshly Squeezed on this channel. Vash, how you doing, buddy? Doing pretty good. Happy to be here. Uh, the, uh, this is a very, very interesting discussion, so uh, let's not waste much time. Let's let's get into it as soon as possible. After our introductions, of course. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely. And, hey, you know what? You you really, I got to say, with the, uh, the, the move to Lake Nona, your studio looks the same. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right exactly look you know uh it was very hard to replicate but uh, i think i have it dialed in just nice you got it you got it so where can everyone at home find you uh on social media sir best place to find me is on as as Ash guy that is right here and uh, uh best place to see videos of uh that I upload is on your channel, actually, at Freshly Squeezed, your source for news and juicy info squeezed fresh right from the Grove. So there you go. Perfect. Perfect. And down below, we got we got Rudio. Rudio, how's it going, man? Pretty good. Uh, Bash, can you uh, scan me in? Can you scan me in real quick? Oh, yeah, yeah I got it. Right <laughs> there you go. There we go. There we go. I just wanted to make sure I have my reservations and everything were good to go on this episode. Of uh, course. Can't wait to talk about the uh, the news that broke last week. So mm. yeah, it's going to be interesting how you guys feel about this topic because it's gotten gotten some traction within the last few days. Absolutely. And Rudio, where can they find you on social media at home if they want to check you out? Uh, you guys can follow me at Rudio on Twitter and on Instagram and TikTok. Perfect. Perfect. And my. Last and final guest, last but not least, Mr. George, Disney Family Man 23. Welcome back, George. Welcome Thank back, you. buddy. Thank you very much. Glad to be back. Mr. Family Man, if you can let everyone know where they can find you at home and social media. And if I'm not mistaken, you have a contest going on on your channel. And I want you to bring that up as well and kind of let everyone know how they can participate. Absolutely. Well, Vash, I have my... I have my annual pass here. So <laughs> let's scan you in, buddy. There you go. Thank you. Works All right. Well. In the turnstile. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, as Orange Grove had said, I am uh, Disney Family Man 23. You can find me uh, under that title on YouTube. And you can also find me on Twitter at Disney George and also on Instagram under the Disney Family Man 23 title. And uh, recently I just got back from a two-week vacation at Walt Disney World. Yes, two weeks. It was my longest trip ever at the resort, and it was perfect. <laughs> so I had thought that um, with everything going on with the, uh, the uh, increase in capacity with guests and like the, the crowd control and everything, I thought that it would be kind of fun that since I spent two weeks at the resort, if someone could guess the actual number of how many walk-ons that I have done throughout my times in the parks. And I just thought, you know, cause it could be a low number. It could be a high number. It's, it's like a, a lottery system. It's like, you could just pick that one number. And I actually have uh, some a nice little Disney bundle, including a $25 Disney gift card with that bundle. So right. it's exactly. So it's like, you can, uh, you know, hit that Disney merch and, and all you have to do is guess a number, you know, you could, uh, link it down, uh, below. I have a video, uh, on my YouTube that's, uh, win prizes for the contest. And you could also find it on Facebook and you could also put it on Instagram as well. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you, George. And thank you all for coming on today. We are going to talk about Lake Nona, Florida, huge news dropped the other day in regards to Disney parks and Walt Disney Imagineering. I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen real quick. And um, we're gonna kinda, I'm, this is just kinda like, to kinda set the table, so to speak, let everyone know what we're talking about here. So Disney is moving 2,000 jobs to Central Florida in an unprecedented uprooting, says Megan Dubois. <laughs> okay, so it says here, 
<laughs> it says, yeah. It says here, employees who will be asked to relocate will most mostly be part of the parks experiences and products division who don't have full dedication to the Disneyland Resort. This also includes some roles that work with Disney's international theme parks. Josh Diamaro, chairman of Disney Parks Experiences and Products, and other Disney officials have said that the Burbank offices are not completely leaving Southern California, where the film and television divisions of the company are located. In fact, 2,000 jobs that are being relocated are less than 5% of the staff in California. All right, so let's go ahead and talk about this. I'm going to start with you, Dre. Uh, Mr. Mr. Vash Sky, um, like, let's just kind of like overall thoughts. What, what, what are your feelings on this whole move to Lake Nona? It's kind of funny because when we were doing the, uh, when we were doing the, the 66th anniversary stream, we thought, well, you know, uh, they could announce something the next day or something like that and completely make this video <laughs> irrelevant. And uh, I don't want to say that happened completely, but man, we were not expecting this, you know? Yeah. It's like, ah, yeah. you know, I mean, this is, this is a, this is a pretty big substantial change. And, and um, it, it's for me, I kind of like look at it as the kind of the center of gravity and the center of gravity has shifted wildly, uh, completely. And because of that, um, this will have uh, some interesting consequences for for not just the people involved, but for the, you know the, their roles, for the um, for, for for the roles and departments that they're in, and for the parks at large. And I think it's a really fascinating discussion to have because let's face it, guys. I mean, Disneyland benefits from that proximity to Glendale, to fourteen hundred one Flower uh, Flower Street. Um, to uh, you know, the, the entertainment capital of, of the world that, that, or at least it was, um, in in Southern California. So this is uh, this is quite substantial. Absolutely, absolutely, Rudio. Overall thoughts before we really dive into this. What what are your feelings on on this whole new this whole news about like you know going to um, moving all these jobs over to uh, Florida? It's crazy because it just happened on a random what, what Tuesday or Wednesday last week, and um. It makes sense in a maybe in a family setting because right now a lot of these families they have their kids out of school because it's summer break. So you do it in the middle of July. You let the kids know like, hey, we're uprooting our family from Southern California to Florida, and you start looking for housing. You look start looking for schools, and right now is like probably the best time to do so. Um, in regards to doing that, I see it from that angle. But to be totally caught off guard, maybe there was some word beforehand that they were possibly being relocated. But for this news to drop just all of a sudden in the middle of July, it's just, oh, my God, it, it took me off guard a little bit. And like how Vash said, like immediately, probably a few days after we recorded that podcast. Yeah. It's kind of like podcasters jinx. It always happens to the always best. Happens to the best shows that like they'll record a show and then literally like i had a friend he was recording a gaming podcast and the ps5 got announced literally like <laughs> within the next few hours so things like this happen all the time mm -hmm. so it's just it, it was our luck th that this happened a few days after we recorded but what can you do hey, <laughs> you know what it really tells me you guys is that we definitely have to pre-record a um a video saying that a third park at anaheim is not happening yeah we'll schedule we'll it be good out. fortune tellers <laughs> <laughs> and by in, within two days they'll announce a third park so hey you yeah. know what a little reverse psychology there but uh yeah, mr Lord. family man um <laughs> you're, you're more of a you're i mean technically you're not a, a florida local but you, you kind of are um what are your thoughts at, from a florida perspective on this lake nona news well i think <clears throat> when i read the the article that i had heard that this was in talks for some time but it was never really fleshed out as okay this is a definite possibility up until when disney threw us the curveball last minute as they seem to be doing you know nowadays and it, it more so seems like we're probably going to be getting information like that from them going forward um because i think us as fans and guests we expect that from disney like when a a presentation or a panel is going on we say okay that's when they're going to announce the big announcement where i think now Disney doesn't want to have that pressure to say, okay, everyone's going to be focused 
on this date at this time, this is when the news is going to be released. So I think that's where Disney now is just going to pick a random date, a random time when they're ready, they announce it to us. And that's that. Having said that, I am more optimistic um, with this. I don't really know really which direction Disney is taking until they uh, flesh more information at, it, at us. And um, But I'm looking at the glass half full of this because I, I guess we'll dive into it more um, in this discussion that I, I feel that with everything, especially with being an annual pass holder of having the, the premier passport before the shutdown, that there was a lot of issues going on when Disneyland was closed and while Disney World was open. And it was like a ping pong ball that neither resort knew any answers to my questions. And they didn't really understand why because no one they never went through a situation like this before. So I think that this is a step forward to really divide the resorts in a way where it's the same company, but they have their own notions of running things. And I think where they kind of break off from that and they move these cast members to Florida to just focus on the Florida. And then that leaves all the California cast members to focus on Disneyland to what that's their stronghold. Yeah. And you know what, in George, I've, you know, I'm on social media and I see a lot of Orlando, you know, Walt Disney world fans for years now. I mean, years and years now complaining that <clears throat> Glendale really doesn't get it. You know, they're, they're Southern Californians trying to create attractions for, for central Florida. Yeah. And we saw it recently with toy story land where like they opened this new land in Florida mm -hmm with no shade coverings where you know <laughs> Florida gets torrential downpours like every six yeah. hours exactly. and there's nowhere to go in Toy Story Land. It's it's a California mindset, but they're they're building it in Florida. You know, Dre, what are your thoughts on that? I mean, in terms of like the kind of disconnect, you know, like oh. where you have people from Southern California designing attractions for weather and everything in Florida and it's not mm -hmm. really working out. Oh, it's a, it's a meme at this point. It's so well known within the industry that uh, that 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 they do this. That they'll they'll you know they come at this with this kind of Southern California mindset. You know, with with you know great weather or design that's that's uh, more amenable to you know the SoCal area. And it's just like it's not compatible at all with Florida. And that might seem like a little small deal, but that comes down to things like, uh, you know, color and reference. I mean, John Hench used to talk about this, how he would design stuff in Southern California, bring it to the parks in, 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 in Orlando, um, you know, put the paint scheme on. It's like, well, that doesn't look right. This doesn't, doesn't look anything like I, I had designed it, even though I had worked outside and everything like that, because you were grading that to the Southern California market. So it even goes to little stuff like that. And then, you know, imagine a, a situation like Toy Story Land where you have no shade structure, you have no roof coverings, you have no awnings and so forth. Uh, you got a little bit of that with, um, what is it, the uh, the, the, the Martian uh, spin attraction there. But, yeah. uh, you know, other than that, I mean, you're just left out to the elements. And it's like, how do, you know, it's not, it's just not, just, that's just not acceptable. And I think, to speak to George's point, I think they really want to have distinct teams broken up, uh, you know, in terms of imagineering to 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 have them positioned in you know next to where they're designing theme parks from obviously the international parks a little bit different but in the case of disneyland and walt disney world i think that's what we're seeing and to be honest that's most similar to the universal model and how they do business and how they do things and i know that they've they've been looking towards that because it's like they keep their operating costs down they're very efficient at their designs and so forth so they're they're leaning in that direction um and you know, you know, if we look at that example, you know, we're worried we're worried about Disneyland and its attention. I will say, if Universal is the example and the model, Universal Studios Hollywood has gotten significant investment since Comcast has run the parks and run them in this way. So I think Disneyland is going to be okay, but you know, it, it's going to be a substantial change. Like I said, the, the the center of gravity has shifted wildly. Yeah, absolutely. It has. It definitely has. And to your like to your point, Dre. Yeah, I think I think Universal Creative Creative actually moved from California to Florida in two thousand one. So they they've been doing this for a while in Florida. And like you said, 
Hollywood hasn't seen really any. I mean, it hasn't been neglected at all. You know, they, no. They've had a lot of investments. So yeah. if they follow that model, like you mentioned, then I think we're in good hands. Absolutely. Rudio, your thoughts. I mean, in terms of like a, from a design perspective, do yeah. you think this is a good thing in terms of like, you know, Florida getting like, you know, maybe some, some actual structures to block the torrential <laughs> every half an hour or like, do, is this good that we have Imagineers on the ground in Florida now and in Anaheim? It is good to have that communication because now they can just literally go from floor to floor with whatever designs or whatever input they're trying to communicate across the board. Uh, I know that even for instance, when I'm watching Florida vloggers and probably George can speak to this, whenever I see like a storm a brewing, people go into those, uh, what would be the tunnels from galaxy's edge and they just huddle under there mm -hmm. until it's the storm is done or they'll go into a show. Like I believe like what is the light McQueen, spectacular that they have at Hollywood studios. Like they always go attack those indoor shows before the storm comes to brew or they'll run back to their hotels. Exactly. Like bash, like, Oh my God. The one thing that I do, do want to point out is that they do kind of factor in the, uh, the food aspect. Um, it was a few episodes back of um, one of the podcasts I listened to the host of the Star Wars show uh, got to do a tour of Galaxy's Edge and they were talking about the blue milk. And when it came down to the blue milk, they said they wanted to make something that people in both coasts can enjoy because you don't want to have something so heavy in the parks in Florida. Like you don't want to throw up basically <laughs> right. after you drink a blue milk. You want to make that like, I don't want to drink milk like, in Florida in general in the middle of the day, I want to have something that I can enjoy, savor while I'm walking around the uh, the, the land. So there is some some considerable factors that go into some of the uh, into the parts, but for the most part, I've, I'm excited to see the leadership or just the teams kind of have that communication finally. And like you said, Orange Grove, Universal's been doing it for 20 years and it's only the park has only gotten better over the last 20 years in my eyes for universal so hopefully that that can happen with disney as well absolutely absolutely now i want to kind of pivot to what this means like kind of i, I don't want to say a political like political ramifications but it kind of is california is seeing 2000 jobs initially now Honestly, none of us believe that that's going to stay that number. Obviously, they're going to move no. more over to Florida. You don't build a whole campus for 2,000 jobs, all right? I'm just going to put it out there. <laughs> right, exactly. It, 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 they're not going to build this huge campus for 2,000 jobs. More are going to be shipped over to Lake Nona for sure. What, Dre, I'm going to start with you. What are your thoughts on the political ramifications in terms of, and I'm not even talking Democrat, Republican. I'm just saying like in terms of California and Florida, <laughs> Like, what do you think this means for, like, do you think California and even the city of Anaheim are sort of sitting up and noticing, hey, look, we're, we're kind of losing these Disney jobs that were really secure here for decades. Are they noticing that? Do they not care? What, what are your thoughts on that? Yeah, so this is kind of interesting because, you know, we know some people online who interact with us on a frequent basis and who are... I would say kind of, uh, I guess they would say that they were kind of defensive of California, but really they're kind of California apologists. And as a result, um, you know, it's like, it's like, oh, you know, because we had kind of mentioned before, like in, in, in previous streams, and I think you had a couple of videos on this where it was like, if they could move Disneyland right now out of the state, mm -hmm. they would. Yeah. Right. And it's just played up. Obviously they can't, but that's what they would like to do. And we've been saying that for years. So to George's point, yeah, this has been a discussion for a long time because the, the, the cost of doing business in California is substantially higher than it is in Florida. So it, it makes sense from their perspective. And to a certain extent, it makes sense for uh, the, the people uh, moving out there. Now, obviously, wages will be adjusted and so forth. I believe... Um, uh, the starting wage, I think Orlando Sentinel had this figure with this, where the starting wage kind of for these positions moving over was 120,000 plus. And if you times just that number by 2000, uh, we're talking about $240 million here. 
in terms of uh, you know annual annual uh, you know income for these for these for these people. So that's a huge tax base that just left California, and that's a significant number. And I think Burbank, I think Glendale, I think Anaheim, I think the whole Southern California mar- market is put on notice. Disney's huge. They've been in California since the 1920s. Right. I mean, this is this is a massive shift here and 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 without question they're looking at this and going oh gee you know i mean you know should we be incentivizing businesses to come over i know to your point uh um, orange grove um you know you you brought up the negotiations with this and forever and i think i I think to your point i think that kind of speaks that uh, you know a little bit that that kind of ties into it a little bit um (laughs) this this is a, this is a substantial move, and 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 California has lost a lot of businesses. Um, you know, Toyota moved their headquarters to Texas. To, you know, even before this, and then you know, Silicon Valley is moving out, and all kinds of stuff. This, they're taking notice for sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I, I think I think you're right. I think they are, and I think that this definitely gives whether it was on purpose or whether it's even indirectly, I do think it gives Disneyland forward a little bit of leverage because, you know, Imagineering is kind of the machine that sort of fuels Anaheim, you know, and Anaheim is probably sitting there going, wow, you know what? I mean, Disney's getting real serious about Orlando. You know, if we don't kind of give them what they want, if we don't kind of pony up a little bit, you know, we, the, you know, they, they might completely kind of fall back on their ambition to here in Anaheim. We'll see what happens. George, what are your thoughts on this in terms of like, do you think California is noticing this? Do you think they're saying, hey, look, we're losing 2000 Disney jobs that were really, really secure here for the past few years or past few decades, actually. Um, do you think they're noticing this or do you think they're kind of brushing it off or what, what are your thoughts on that? Oh, absolutely. I mean, the city of Anaheim and the state of California in general, they're not dumb. They know what's going on. And it's almost like Disney's desperation a little bit with, but very subtle, but also using like a reverse psychological method that they started off with Disneyland forward. And Disney actually created a website that you could actually search on a search engine. They actually put effort into making this website and then you have this notion of okay now we're going to take 2000 california jobs that's including walt disney imagineering that is basically the arm of the parks division as far as creation and implementing an expansion of the parks so then you attach that to disneyland forward and it's basically disney giving the city of anaheim these little little pokes, little digs to say, you know what, if you're not going to make the first move, we're going to. And now you have to react to those decisions. And I really think that Anaheim, the city of Anaheim has to wake up at some point to say that Disneyland is still relevant. It's if you take Disneyland out of Anaheim, you basically just have Harbor Boulevard and Catella Avenue. That's that's basically what you have. It becomes Fullerton or Torrance or any other city in LA. I mean, it it, it it's no longer. Yeah, you exactly. Guys are, you guys are telling me you guys don't want to go to the Wolf Creek Lodge. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, in the number one indoor swimming pool in Southern California. I mean, come on now. <laughs> yeah, you know, yeah, it's good. Oh, <laughs> Touché, man. Touché. Rudy, Rudy, uh, what are your thoughts on this? I mean, like, I mean. Is California noticing? Is Anaheim noticing? Or is this kind of radio? Before you go, I just have to say I'll go to that as long as there's a bus transportation to the nearest Denny's. Then I'm good. <laughs> Considering we don't even have trams from the Disneyland parking lot to Disneyland, I don't know if that's going to be a, a attainable. <laughs> <laughs> um, but like, I, I mean, it's no secret Newsom and Disney are their budding heads. Um, the fact that Newsom showed up to Universal the day that Disneyland reopened, I mean, yeah. kind of telling sign right there. And the fact that we're getting, Disney put out the, the proposal last summer or around that time for Disneyland Forward. And the fact that they, like George said, made a website and people who live in the community in the surrounding area of Disneyland, they were sent a package 
of all of the materials as far as what would be proposed for this expansion. Um, they went that far to do something like that. And I hope, I do, I, I hope Disneyland Forward goes, goes forward. No pun intended. But um, <laughs> the fact that these, that there's still a war, there's still a, a war in the silence that it's just not publicly known, but these people, hopefully Disney and California can just put egos aside and say, look, we, we appreciate you. We know what you do for the state. And we just want to have that relationship that we had prior to the, to the pandemic that we can, we can both exist in California and right. not have to have these opinions and whatnot. And that Cal Disney to California is just, you see it in the commercials. You see it on the visit California or visit Southern California. Disneyland is in the forefront of those commercials every time they put one out. And to say that California doesn't care about Disney, they, they so care about Disney. It's just right now they're just not in the best space with each other. So Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think also, it also, oh, oh, sorry, go ahead, Dre. Oh, no, no, go ahead. Go ahead, George. No, and I was going to say to your uh, point, Rudio, that even before the pandemic and the shutdown that, you know, even when, because I'm for sure, as I went to the, uh, the D23 Expo, when they would announce, you know, all, <laughs> all these announcements, you have, you know, Tron, you have Guardians of the Galaxy, you have Ratatouille, and, you know, but Disneyland's going to get a new parade. You know, so it's like it almost still seemed like at that at that point of time that they were still having issues that Disneyland was still taking a back burner to Walt Disney World. And I think now with the shutdown and the pandemic, it's now Disney has to get themselves out of a rut. And it's like this is the best time to try to promote <clears throat> Disneyland in a sense that it still has the potential that it has since it opened back in 1955. And it could still measure up to Walt Disney World, despite its size. Yeah, yes. and, and and George, you bring up a great point. And I think that, like, in terms of physical space, we are definitely at a limitation compared to Walt Disney World. But I think in terms of actual growth, in terms of hotel occupancy, or in terms of um, number of days stayed at the resort, I think we actually have an advantage over Walt Disney World in the sense that Walt Disney World is already a six to seven or eight day vacation, right? Families can only add so many more days to a vacation without start when before you start cannibalizing yourself, before people start to oh well we, do we really need Hollywood Studios ah we can do this instead. Disneyland has growth there, you know we we're only a two day resort. They have you can add another day or two to that pretty easily if they wanted to. I just wish California wasn't that obstacle, that hurdle to have to constantly have to overcome. Cause I do think there is a lot of growth potential here in Southern California. If they, if they were allowed to do it, you know, to so, radio's point, um, you know, look, listen, they shut down the parks yeah. and, and we've said it on this show, but, but, but arbitrarily for, for 400 days, they lost billions and billions of dollars, $23 million a day. And I understand that there were circumstances surrounding that decision, but I mean, that's going to cause some bad blood right there. Josh Giamaro made it very clear in his letter that uh, California is pretty business unfriendly. All right. In no uncertain terms. That's shut across the bow. And they put that, that in quotes. They actually mm -hmm. put that in quotes in his letter. This is a business standpoint of moving these cast members over to Florida. I mean, they're basically saying, we're not getting the business that we are in California. So we're going to take it to Florida. I mean, he actually says it in his letter without yeah. actually saying it. Oh yeah. I mean, it's, it, it's all in there. I, I mean, it, it is some bad blood here and yeah, I mean, California has, uh, I mean, uh, Disneyland has so much potential for growth, so much potential for, and you know, an explode, you know, an explosion and an opportunity, not just for Disney, but for, but for cast members, for the community, for, you know, the, 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 the growth of the overall, uh, of the overall resort district, garden Grove, all that, you know, new hotels, all of that. I mean, it's, it's, I mean, we, we talked about it on, on, on the um, 66th anniversary special, yes. an amazingly bright future, but let's be fair here. Do we really want to dump uh, a bunch of eggs into Anaheim and, 
and be potentially not shut down by the state, but, but just, you know, <laughs> there's been a lot of legislation going through California that just makes it, you know, the, the returns aren't nearly what they were before. Right. right? Uh, you know, it, it, when, when it comes to the, 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 uh, what, what, what should I say? The, the kind of the, the, the fiscal, um, you know, it, just your, your kind of potential. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Your, your fiscal potential, the, 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 the reports that you do to kind of figure out whether this is going to be profitable or not, th those are completely screwed. Yeah. I'm, I'm sorry, not screwed, but skewed, skewed. Yeah. And you, you because of that, here. Yeah, well, that's, pretty, yeah, that's pretty much, you know, it's pretty, <laughs> like I could say something that, you know, I'm just going to say, no, I, uh, I won't say that. I won't say that. I'll, I'll just keep it. <laughs> but um, but look, you know, it's it's a very different situation right now yeah. in California. And I think this was a big wake up call for them. And I think that's why they, the timetable has shifted to where maybe we were going to do this in 10 years, maybe slowly drawn out. We're going to do it now over 18 months because yeah. it's just, you know, <sighs> We, we, you know, we, we, we have to start getting revenue and the stock price is only going to be where it's going to be for so long. And it's inflated right now. They got to start making moves here. They got to start turning a profit and they got to get their operation operating costs down. Bob Iger's talked about this before where it's like, we want a more nimble company, a more reflexive company, one that can kind of, uh, you know, kind of maneuver with the market in a, in a faster way. And part of that's consolidation. Part of that's getting your operating costs down. Part of that's trimming the fat. And that's what they're doing right now. Yeah. And, and, and uh, yeah, exactly. And, and this, this screams Bob Iger. I mean, it, the timeline alone, cause it was planned, I think back in 2019 when no Iger was still the CEO, but this is exactly a, the kind of move that, uh, you know, Bob Iger would make to create, like you mentioned, Dre, a more nimble company, more, more lean, uh, more able to react. So it's very, very, very interesting. It's, it's going to be a, an extremely uh, interesting few years to say the least you know yeah um oh, yeah yeah it, it's gonna be very very interesting now i do want to share now vash you have something for me right in terms of like uh an, a, now bruce vaughn is he a current imagineer or is he a former imagineer he was the head of imagineering at one point i know the 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 kind of executive structure has kind of shifted around in pretty substantial ways i don't know if he's still with the company i was trying to determine i was trying to figure out that information before look bruce vaughn i've never really been a huge fan of him I, I've I've disagreed with some of his decisions, some of his philosophy and mindset. I always thought he was kind of a more of a company man than he was, you know, a, a kind of imaginary purist, so to speak. But this is the most honesty I've seen from anybody, current imagineer, previous imagineer, anybody. This was a very honest look at what's going on right now. Can, I, I, think can it, I go ahead and share that? Can oh, I go, go ahead. ahead, go ahead. It's right on the screen there. Oh, uh, Whoa, we well, I, <laughs> well, I don't know how that happened. Into get, into get hang it. on, hang on, hang on. Go ahead, go ahead. Uh, let's do this. Okay, is that good? There we go. So, yes, I read this and it. Dre, you're absolutely correct. I mean, this is extremely honest. I mean, he even mentions in here like how it, he felt like it was kind of a return to the post Frank Wells era, you know, where, where the bottom line is sort of king, you know, so to speak. He really goes on. But then it's kind of like, you know, it, it, it is kind of it's brutally honest, but then it sort of transitions into like this hopeful message for Imagineers that creativity lives and that this isn't the end and that, you know, it's all on you guys and to, to continue the legacy ride to the challenge Imagineers you know, onward. So it's, it's very interesting. Uh, Rudio, did you get a chance to check this out on social media? I'm kind, or? Of, I'm kind of skimming through it right now. And like how you said, it's basically giving those Imagineers like that hope. Uh, I know that probably a lot of us have watched the Imagineering story on Disney Plus, and you've seen the trials and tribulations that Imagineering team has gone through throughout oh, the yeah. years. And you've mm -hmm. seen the scares that they've gotten with each CEO that's coming in and out of that building. There's a scare. Yeah. What are they going to do with this team? And it's, to see something like this, it, it's, it's warming just for the simple fact that there's somebody out there who still believes in them. Who still, no matter the facts, no matter what's about to happen, there's still somebody who supports them and who Absolutely. knows what's what's their potential and what's their capability. And 
I mean, I, as somebody who's had people who work for, or personally know people who work for the Walt Disney Company, specifically the parks, I hope that they that they take the challenge and whatever comes forward, whether they want to remain with the company or depart, I mean, it's up to them. It's their personal choice, but hopefully they, 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 they can tackle this sort of challenge and they can move forward and nothing really gets affected and that they can still create that sort of magic within the company. Absolutely. Well said, Rudio. And Imagineering has gone through some darker times than this, for sure. Um, there were some time after Walt's death up until the Michael Eisner era where there was a lot of dark moments for Imagineering. So they can definitely get through this. And if any Imagineers are watching this, you guys got this. You, you, you're going you're gonna to get through it, for sure. George, what are your thoughts? I mean, what, what are your feelings on the Bruce Vaughn comments? Did you get a chance to check these out? Or I, I did. And... Uh, it, as as Dre said, I don't really think anyone could have said something perfect without it being, you know, it's pretty much self-explanatory, you know, of what he's saying, and it's quite clear. And I think a lot of people, even Disney fans, you know, were kind of in the mindset of when all this was going on, okay, if you're working in Imagineering, you know, you're safe, you know, you're not going anywhere. But I mean, Imagineering, a lot of them still got cut with all the other cast members, you know, so it's, it, we all saw Disney as this well-oiled fine machine that couldn't be touched. And, you know, within the past year or so, it, it showed that, you know, anything can really happen. And yeah. I, I think with, as also what Rudio said about the Imagineering story, I think honestly, now more than ever, there needs to be another set part of the Imagineering story. So Leslie Iwerks, we would love to see that because I think this this instance right now would show the true craft of what Imagineering does and how committed they are to the company. And no matter what the obstacle is, no matter what the challenge is, they will move forward and, you know, with, with stride and dedication and that I think for the Disney community is what we need to see. And I think if we all band together as Disney fans, along with the head of the company, and I think that's also what's part of Disneyland forward, because a lot of people, you know, when they see it as Disneyland, they just say, okay, well, there's not, there's no room there. So Disney has to show, Hey, there's still potential here, but you as the fans, you as the guests, I think we have to harmonize as the fans and as the company itself. And we have to find that middle ground. And I, I really think that Bruce had actually like hit the nail right on the head and it does show promise for the future. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Go, ahead. Go ahead, Dre. One last thought before we, before we end here, I know you got, you got a hard out. So I just want to say, you know, I know we may be coming off as insensitive to this kind of whole thing, for the, for the cast members involved. They're, unfortunately, they're kind of uh, pawns in this whole game. I, I mean, if you really want to put it bluntly, uh, we don't, you know, we might be speaking cavalier about this, but this is a huge substantial move for these cast members. And yeah. we had heard internal rumblings about morale and how it's down and, and, and everything. And Bruce Vaughn lays that out uh, quite, quite, uh, quite profoundly that that is what's going on, that, that, that those, that, that kind of, um, uh, you know the, the the current state of morale is down, but uh, I I will say I mean to to George's point I mean it's 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 going to be very difficult. It's going to be very challenging. It's going to be very tough. There's going to be some growing pains here, and it's going to be extremely difficult. I mean I think Rudio, uh, you know, you showed me an article just this morning that that the housing supply in 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 the Florida area is 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 down. Um, very few houses on the market. Everybody's moving to Florida uh, right now. And, uh, you know, they've experienced like 30 years of growth in like two years. I mean, it's, it's, it's wild. It's crazy. And even in Walt Disney World, they're having problems getting cast members to, the, to, to work at Walt Disney World because to find, uh, you know, to, to, for, for a person to find an apartment within one to two hours of the Walt Disney World property is extremely challenging. It's going to be tough. This is going to be, this is going to, this is going to be rough. But I do think Bruce Vaughn's sentiment yeah. on the bright future that they have in front of them. Um, I think is, uh, I, you know, that 
it is it is bright that the, the, the day is always darkest before the dawn yeah exactly i i completely agree i, I think that this is a move that makes look it, it makes financial sense obviously disney's doing it because of the lower taxes the wages you know all that stuff financial sense it makes but it also makes sense creatively like we mentioned yeah. earlier in the video where the imagineers are going to be closer to florida now where they can kind of <clears throat> you know start designing lands and attractions based on Florida and not just, you know, a, a Southern California land kind of plopped into, into Southern, in, into central Florida, which doesn't make any sense because we don't get rain here. You know what I'm saying? So, so if you're waiting for like beast castle and you need a place to wait before your reservation actually comes up, you might actually have shade in front of you, like above exactly. you. And okay. Well, that's, <laughs> exactly. that's an interesting concept. I, you know, you, you yeah. might not get you might not get a, a torrential downpour on you, you know, randomly. You know, you might actually have some coverings, so you don't, you know, get soaking wet. It might be mm. nice. You know, it might be nice. Sounds a bit revolutionary. Hmm. <laughs> In twenty twenty one, it'll be interesting. But thank you, fellas, for coming on so much. I do appreciate it. Dre, I'm always I always mix that up. <laughs> but Dre, uh, if you can go ahead and uh, start off and uh, let everyone know where they can find you on social media. Best place to find me is on Twitter. That is right here. Um, best place to interact with me. I'm always up for discussion. Uh, moreover, uh, if you want to see videos of me, I'm on this channel right here that you're watching. Freshly squeezed your source for news and info squeezed fresh right from the Grove. So that's where you can find me. Perfect. Rudio brother. Where can everyone find you, sir? Uh, you guys can find me on social media at Rudio Instagram, uh, Twitter and TikTok. Perfect. Perfect. And Mr. Family man, 23 George, where can everyone find you on social media? You can find me on YouTube at Disney family man, 23. You could also find me on Twitter at Disney George and also on Instagram under the family man title. And please definitely uh, go on my channel and, uh, enter into the contest. I would love to see, you know, some, you know, some movement there. So, you know, I could get that Disney bundle out to our, uh, our winner. And I'd love to see uh, someone take away that prize. Yes, absolutely. And I will be linking that video that you made George on that contest in the description below. So everyone, I encourage you to check that out comment on his video with your guesstimate as to how many walk on attractions he experienced on his two week vacation. And you'll get that. And you'll get those prizes. If you guess correctly, if you guess correctly. <laughs> yeah. exactly. So yes. So thank you all for coming on. I do appreciate it. And thank you all for watching. We always appreciate it. Thank you so, so much. Comment below. What are your thoughts on the Lake Nona situation? Imagine, you know, Imagineering, um, what are your thoughts on the overall feelings of like how it's going to, you know, impact Disneyland resort, how it's going to impact Walt Disney world. Love to hear from you guys. Thank you all so, so much for watching. And as always have a great, big, beautiful tomorrow. <laughs>